Let's talk about queues. Just like a stack, a queue is an abstract data type defined from the point of view of the data with possible values, operations on those values, and behaviors of those operations. And again, as with stacks, the data for a queue can be any type. The key difference is that a queue acts like a waiting line, pushing to the back of the queue and popping from the front. The term first in, first out, or FIFO, is the phrase associated with queues, because it behaves just like the waiting line. In London, they say, queue up for the bus. The operations for a queue are similar in nature, but sometimes named differently. The push operation, sometimes called NQ, puts a data item at the back of the line. The pop, or DQ operation, takes the data item from the front of the queue. The peak operation just uses the front data value, but does not remove it. Let's look at this sequence, the same one we used in the stack lesson, and see how it works out with a queue. First, the 9 is pushed into the empty queue, and ends up at the back and the front at the same time, since it is the only one in line so far. The 8 then lines up behind it. A peak command looks at the front value 9, which is retrieved and output, but not removed. The 5 is pushed, and then the front value 9 is popped and output. See how the front and the back pointers are moving as new pushes and pops occur. The peak retrieves the 8, which is output, and then the 3 is pushed. The final pop removes and outputs the 8. Now some possible analysis questions could be similar. Maybe what is the value at the front of the queue that might be popped or peaked next? In this case, it's the 5. Uh, how many elements are left in the queue? There are two. What was the last value popped? It was the 8. Now, just as we did with the stack lesson, let's look at another example showing how you would do it on paper with your students. Let's use the same push, pop, and peak sequence with a queue. The difference is that a queue is going to push to the back of the queue and pop from the front, and the peak is also looking at the front but not removing it. We'll still output when we pop or peak, and we'll use this as our structure for processing. The thing you need to understand is that there are some languages that don't use push and pop, but instead of use NQ and DQ, but they still mean the same thing, so there shouldn't be any confusion here. So when we push, we push to the back of the queue, so push four means the four lines up, goes all the way to the back, which is empty, so it really is the front. Push 5 means the 5 lines up behind him. Push 2, the 2 lines up there. Peak X means we look at the 4, but we don't call him up yet. Push the 7, the 7 goes there. Pop the X, we now remove the 4. Push the 3, 3 goes there. Pop the X, the 5 is removed. Peak X, we look at the 2, but we don't remove it. Push 9, 9 goes here and pop x means we remove the 2. So now what's at the front of the queue? It's the 7. What was the last value popped? That was the 2. The size of the remaining queue is 3. Is the queue empty? No. What are the remaining values? 7, 3, and 9. So this would be a typical way that you would process a queue, just remembering that you push to the back and you pop from the front.